let him punch me in the face. <laughs> I probably I wouldn't would go that Reggie, far, but <laughs> Reggie Northrup could kick me in the ribs right now because I could say I've taken on a professional. What's owner. up, football fans? But most importantly, UFL fans, welcome to episode five of Polar Opposite. Can you get the music? All right, guys, we got a great episode today. Uh, I'm feeling fantastic. As you can see, I'm up in the rankings, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, if you haven't seen Polar Opposites before, this is the number one debate show on all topics UFL that the fans get to vote and we debate them. And then you get to vote who wins the debate. I'm Ace. That's Webb. We have our host, KB. And in our ears, you can't hear him. You can't see him. But he's talking to us behind the scenes, trying to make us laugh. Kenny, he's our producer. He's yelling in our ears. <laughs> Welcome to Polar Opposites. We have three topics and then a blindside question at the end that Webb and I are not prepared for. So it's a great time. But first, I think we should talk about our records. We've been keeping track of who wins debates. And I have a graphic here that shows how last week went. Uh, if Kenny pulled, there you go. There you go. Oh, we were right there. Woo! So I am now up by one. If you see Webb, um what i won one debate 126 to 28 another debate 73 to 33 you got me on one you got me on one people really like that uh i got the, i got really you like on that. the only one that matters to me that's the only one that really matters, the only one that like matters? I, I went into the episode knowing that that was the one i'm gonna win Come like I, I knew that was my strongest they argument. all matter no, matter. but that was the most uh, topic number one always matters the most to me. Like, I, I feel like that carries the most weight of the whole episode because okay. we go the longest and we argue. And then, did you see the two answers? It's the DC Defenders and the Houston Roughnecks. It matters even more personally. So. Because it's us. But you know what it's matters right. to me, Webb? Yeah, you, you're, you're up. You're above 500. I get it. I get it. I get it. The champ is here. <laughs> the champ is here, Webb. <laughs> the champ is here. <laughs> Well played. Well no! played. It's upside down. See, you're not even a champ. It's upside Let's down. Let's yeah, go. There you go. The Rock may have messed up WrestleMania, but he's not messing up polar opposites. And I got my belt. I got my belt. It's gonna sit there all episode. So I get tired of it. Yeah, you enjoy that, buddy. You enjoy that. I'm watching you it. I'm think, watching it. You didn't think I was gonna pull out the- <laughs> No. I thought if you ever got one, it would have been last week when you when you swept me. I didn't think I swept you, but we were tied. We were tied. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you're right. So now I'm ahead, man. Now I'm ahead. I wanted to make sure that you you had no rebuttal, nothing coming back. I got you. With that, with that, let's let's get on to where you might be able to catch back up. KB, what is our first topic today? First topic, we're going to talk about what the best wide receiver room is. This is easy. This is easy. I'm just going to take over because you always let me go easy. first on the first one. And I don't think I don't think you I don't think it's as easy as you think. It, it's but, clear. Yes, it's you, clear. You can go first. You can go first. The Birmingham Stallions are number one. I like Why? I I know I don't Why? kiss their butt a lot. I don't say nice things about them, but uh what Zach Potter has done in that GM room, I mean, as the GM for that wide receiver room is just unbelievable, man. Like we saw it firsthand, right? We we saw it firsthand. In the championship, Magoo made it look great, but also those wide receivers. De- oh, Deion Kane's back, right? That's the champion, right? Okay. MVP, right? In the biggest games. Uh, Vic Bolden. Vic Bolden's back. Guess what? He's he's a championship game MVP, too. They have and, two. They have both USFL game champion MVPs. Yep. And then he had 40, uh, Bol- Bolden, who had 42 catches in 2022 with Jay Marr as quarterback. So Jay Marr is quarterback again. So. Then you go maybe. down and you, uh, th- then you get, yeah, maybe. Then you go down and Amari Rogers is there, right? You know, he was in the NFL in October, right? Solid player. I, you know, I love him. He's a Clemson guy. I've talked about two Clemson guys already. You love Clemson. And then you got, get it. Uh, then you got Slade Bolden. You know, you got to have an Alabama boy there, right? He's a slot guy. 42 catches the senior year in Alabama, which if you pay attention to Alabama, they've ha- they've been loaded at wide receiver. The fact that, they, this guy is the fourth, maybe fifth, maybe third, depends on the game, had 42 catches his last season in college. 
And then Gary Jennings. Kenny's about to be in my ear, but they stole him from the, the Battle Hawks, right? Beck went publicly and was like, oh, we're going to play like this now? Kevin Austin. I don't know about stole. No, but he was a free agent, but it upset another team, right? So obviously there's an, there's more demand for that player. And then we're talking about Marlon Williams, you know, who had 32 catches, four touchdowns with Jay Mars quarterback, who's been in the system now two, three years, whatever, two years for him, right? No, Marlon's been three years. Bolden's I believe been he two. got hurt. Yeah. yeah. Both? Well, one of them went to the XFL. Chris Lacey, we're talking about another one, right? He's got NFL receptions. I want to know who they cut. I know they talked about on St- Stallions Run this this uh, week, but they got 10 receivers, and 1 through 10 might be solid options. 1 through 10 I'd are rather- solid options, but it's like they're consistently good in that wide receiver room. I'll give you that. It's pretty good across the board, but the top talent is not in that wide receiver room. Not it. Not a wide receiver, man. I mean, if you had come at me with linebacker, maybe, you know, corner, okay. You know, maybe even quarterback, dude. If you had come at me with quarterback, I might say that's the best quarterback room. Sure, sure, sure. But the best wide receiver room in this league, and Kenny's going to yell in my ear because he's excited. You won't hear it, but I will, and it'll get me pumped up and ready to go. It's the St. Louis Battle Hawks wide receiver room. Come on. Come on. He said, yes, Kenny in my ear goes, caca! The St. Louis Battlehawks have the best wide receiver room. It's it's hands down, man. Like as far as the receivers that are actually going to start and are going to play uh, the majority of snaps every game, they they are the best. Let's talk about it. I'm going to try to. So my mic's being weird. So I'm going to try and read notes really quick and then come back. So I still sound good. Yeah, there you go. So Jacor Pearson, number one, all XFL wide receiver coming from the Saint Seattle Sea Dragons. Boom, Jacor. Uh, all XFL, 60 receptions, 670 yards. 670 yards is a lot. That's like just a little bit shy of what Corey Coleman had last year and set the USFL modern record. Look at that. 2024 wide receiver room. That room is star. Dude, and I- I'm not even going to talk about a couple of those receivers because I only care about the ones that are really going to play and are really going to start in the games and make a difference. And those ones are the top receiving core in the league. It's like you put Justin Jefferson and you put Jamar Chase and you put Cooper Cup all on a team. So, Jacor Pearson, <laughs> dude, he got highlighted by the NFL, dude. Jacor Pearson got highlighted in, by the NFL. He's really big. Let me make sure this is right here. He's a great receiver. When I say he's really big, he's a really big name. He's not that big of a receiver. He's a speedy guy, but he has fantastic body control. He catches balls that you don't think that he's going to with his size, and then he is incredibly fast. Ran a 4 2 in the uh, combine. Now, Darius Shepard. Darius Shepard is a name that's known by the USFL and the XFL. But in the XFL last year, he was just a little bit more impressive. He was on the Generals, but then he comes over, and there's my man, Jakur, beast. But Darius Shepard was on the St. Louis Battlehawks last year. Uh, They have another receiver that, well, sorry, yes. So they have other receivers that might be a little more talented, but he also was a special teams player of the year in the XFL as well as just being all XFL uh, kicker, punt kicker and punt returner. But he still had 48 receptions for 519 yards and six touchdowns. That's a lot of yards. That's a lot of touchdowns. When you are on the same team with the next receiver, Hakeem Butler, who is an absolute beast. And some people might say, no, he's just a glorified tight end. No, he's not really a tight end. That dude's not blocking anybody. Hakeem Butler is out there running routes. He is a wide receiver. Look at Hakeem Butler right here. Body and dudes, bro. Hakeem Butler had 51 receptions, 599 yards, and eight touchdowns. The fact that he put up those numbers and Darius Shepard put up 48 receptions for 519 yards and six touchdowns, they really can air it out. And this is a team that is based on passing. They are not based on running. The offense in Birmingham starts with the run game. So they're not caring about the wide receivers as much. Whereas in St. Louis, they really were paying attention to who they were bringing in, how they fit the scheme, and the talent. And this talent is just better than Birmingham. Then you have Blake Jackson. Blake Jackson was also on the uh, Sea Dragons, completely overshadowed by Jacor Pearson because he's just that good. But Blake Jackson still had uh, 45 receptions, 450 yards, and two touchdowns. There's like 2,000 receiving yards between those four receivers alone. And then you have the rest of the room. I just don't know how you compete with that. This thing is you, so heavy, you, so impressive. You keep, you keep, you keep mentioning uh, USFL and XFL stats, right? 
Yeah, because that's what seven, we're talking about. We're seven talking out about of the ten. The, 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 the stallions don't have the same numbers. The the stallions don't have the same numbers because seven out of the ten guys were in the NFL. We're in the sorry, NFL. sorry, yeah, sorry. They didn't now. have. They were on a. But they're talented. That that's what I'm telling you. We're talking about the best wide receiver room. We're not talking about the best fantasy. If you want to talk about fantasy, we got fantasy writers on UFM. You can go talk about with fantasy. Them. We're, we're not talking about fantasy. We're talking about actual pure talent. And you can't tell me these guys went to big schools, Ohio State, Oklahoma State, uh, okay. Clemson. They, they, this is the more talented quarterback uh, wide receiver room. And they have a lesser See, you quarterback You even want to say quarterback room because no, you know no, that's because, a better argument. No, because you know that's a better argument. Uh, McC- McC- and even though I might win with the McCarron belt. McCarron is better than anything they have in Birmingham. It's simple right. as that. McCarron, yeah. well, McCarron, so so we'll that's where I was going with that. Corral, but. I'm, but, I'm telling you, no. Well, nope. I'm telling you, if if we're going talent for talent, uh, the Stallions are one through ten. One through ten are way better. It, it, like it's clear to me. It's it's clear. You you hate them. I get them. So do I. I get I it. <laughs> but you, you quoted Seattle Sea Dragons stats. Well, guess what, man? They They're threw gone. the ball the entire time. They threw Hell the ball ninety yeah, percent of the time. So of course, you know the, of course the stats are going to look they great. They had good receivers. Well, no, it's, they no, it's because they had good receivers. It's yeah, because but. their play caller was married to a system, and that's what he's going to do. Same thing AJ Smith's going to do down in Houston. That, that, that's what they do. Of course, Mike Leach, right? God rest his soul. He his wide receivers always put up great stats. You know why? Because they threw the ball. Wide receivers, wow. are, it, it's just accumulation stats. I'm talking there you about go. pure talent. There you go. Okay. So then at, yeah, the end of the you season, accumul- at the end of the season, if we're going to come back and we're going to have this argument and you're going to try and say Birmingham Stallions, I guarantee you that the St. Louis Battlehawks receivers are going to okay. have better okay. stats. Okay, real quick, real quick. So out guarantee of all it. your guys, how many guys were in NFL? Because the whole point of this is to get these guys back to the NFL, right? No, was, if you watched my show, you know that it's not necessarily about that. It's also about becoming a standalone league that provides you football in the spring. But yeah, okay, yeah, Webb. So it's so it's going to be a practice. Who squad talked league, to Moose right? this week? Me. It's the practice squad. It's not going to be a minor league. It's going to be a practice squad where it's basically the guys right below the oh, NFL. Brandon. So it's practice squad league, right? So these guys were all on practice squads. <laughs> so these were the best. Your guys weren't like I. That's you a good made point. the I mean, for me. That's a good point. I like that point. And. and, and you know I'm going to be loyal to the Clemson guys, so I'm going to ride. I do. Them, as soon and as I saw, I, 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 like, I, I figure giddy up. SEC. I figure giddy up nation, and I, you know, I owe them one. After you all, just these want years. them to get behind I, I owe them you one. in the polls. When this is the be- I watched Kenny. Sh- I watched the Battle Hog Blitz, and Kenny said that they have the best wide receiver room. Yep, there you go. Oh, dude, Jamarcus Bradley. I didn't even talk about. It wouldn't let me put his stats in there. You it's only chose this because Kenny hundred. already had these graphics. That, that's I, the reason why. No, you I chose it because Kenny had the graphics. Up. I genuinely yeah. did not know he was going to pull these. Yeah, up. You're appeasing um, to the producer. These are super nice. That's called a brown nosing. That's all you've been. You're, these would have been sick. Um, uh, no, but I, I actually went and found my own graphics and I made my own notes. Marcel Amen didn't even talk about him. He had 259 yards. <laughs> Yeah, because it's right there. Kenny, pull up the stallion ones. Oh, you can't. Hey, Marcus because Bradley. Is... Blake, Blake Jackson, it, it, dude. There's an outpill battle guy. on this show. It's an outpill so, battle on this show. Later on, we're going to talk about Surprise Star. I almost picked Blake Jackson. He's out of Mary Harden Baylor. He played 40 minutes from my house. Uh, my brother lives next to Mary Harden Baylor in Temple. Like, I almost picked him because that dude's a beast, but he's going to be overshadowed with the talent. On this team, Jacor Pearson. He's not the best player from Mary Hart and Baylor in the league, just to let you know. Maybe not. Maybe not. Keith Gibson Jr., baby. But I think, yes, I was about to say, KB, I think we've wrapped that part. I think. Of course you did. Of course you did. Because it's an uphill battle. The champ is here. The champ is here. We got to wrap. I wonder if I can, like, clip this so it stops falling. (laughs) Mine's moving on. KB, what do we have? My kids used it. Okay, so we're, we're we're moving on to something a little bit lighter, a little bit more fun. Okay, a little bit. We're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna lighten things up a little bit. I love it. Okay. All right. So this weekend, you have one quarterback from the league that you can meet up with at your corner bar and throw back a few. Who are you we changed choosing? it, Kenny. We, we Who are you choosing? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so we were originally going to have who is the most attractive QB in the UFL. Um, 
that one, but it <laughs> seemed to just be making people uncomfortable. They don't want to see me and Webb talk about how attractive. Um... <laughs> no, actually, he is. Whichever one played hockey. But uh, we, people did not want to see Webb and I talking about the QB we found was most attractive and why Reed Sinnott was it. So we decided that we were going to talk about which QB would you most like to have a beer with? Like sit and just chat over a beer. And this one, I will go first. Uh, mine is Brandon Silvers. And it's for a multitude of reasons. One of the biggest reason is that I have been trolling Brandon Silvers on Twitter uh, for weeks now for like zero reason. I like the guy. Uh, I just love that he has the most like embarrassing photos of any player in this league out there. So I just keep posting his funny photos. I even photoshopped the Battlehawks helmet on his childhood photo that he used as his profile picture. So I just think it would be funny and it'd be a good icebreaker. So that's the first reason that it's a good dude. Love it. That's Brandon Whedon, but. (laughs) (laughs) But the first reason is that. Is that that's an icebreaker that I could talk to him about how I've trolled him on Twitter and it would be a good icebreaker. The second reason is that, you know, we are both people who love spring football, Brandon and I. When you look at this guy's resume, Brandon Silvers has played in uh, the AAF, the TSL, the NFL, the FCF, the XFL. He's played in basically every spring football league that exists except the USFL, and that's because he was in the XFL. And so, like, I feel like he would have the best spring football stories that there is, you know, when one of my favorite things when I interviewed Kevin Sumlin was the fact that he was telling stories about so many people that you knew the names of, you know, big name coaches. And it's it's a really cool thing. Someone who's been around that long and been through so many things, whereas Brandon Silvers has been around so many of the names that you and I have gotten to know. And I think it would be really cool to hear those stories. He's also best friends with AJ McCarron. So I'm sure he has great stories uh, about him. He'd have great stories from the Sea Dragons and Trey Williams back in XFL 2.0. You know, he's all these names that we know of. He has the stories of. And I just think he'd be a fun guy to sit down with and crack a couple cold ones and laugh. So Brandon Silvers, that's my guy. And he's going to be in Arlington Friday. So maybe I'll drive up there and we'll make that happen. Interesting, interesting. Kenny, can you pull up my video, please? What? I want to talk to every guy. I'm not going to pick one. One what? QB that's uh, that's attractive or one QB that is that I want to drink beers with. I want to talk to every guy. I want to talk to Troy Williams about his career with the Maulers and also with the Utah Utes. I want to talk to Case Cookus about getting the unsportsmanlike conduct. Right. I want to talk about Jordan Tiamo, you know, his trips to the NFL and Ole Miss and playing for Todd Haley and then playing for the in front of the beer snake. I want to talk to Jamar and his battles with Mark Thompson on Twitter. I want to talk to a lot of different players. I want to talk to football players. That's not how this not works. Gonna, I, 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 this is how this works, because I can't you get to choose one. all of them. You get Brandon Silvers. I'll take the field. I'll take the, I'll talk to any single one. Anybody but at Brandon least Silvers. once. <laughs> but we'll go back to your trolling right no but, but my whole thing with this whole thing and this is the reason why i gave you a tough time with the attractiveness and all that kind of stuff i like every single person in this league so my I vote they're all hot <laughs> i think they're all <laughs> hot but like my vote is that i want the x's and the o's but i also want the stories like i i've talked to boogie many many times and just hearing some of his stories and just a, a life in general these guys are not NFL player or they've been in the NFL but they are not NFL players so they've got a unique story and I know me and you've kind of used the same line when we're trying to bring players onto our show about telling the football journey we want to share these players football journey so if I'm grabbing a beer I'm grabbing a beer with every single one of them I'm going to Arlington which I'm jealous of you that you only live an hour away because I want to know these players stories so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take a political answer here I'm going to take a political answer here and say all of them. I love that. That's the most BS answer. But if I had to choose one, Troy Williams. If I had to choose one, Troy Williams, Smiley, because you want to know why? Because I never got to have really a conversation. Because every time I interviewed him, I interviewed him twice on Hammer Time. Um, He has terrible service. So 
<laughs> that's the reason why I never got the full conversation. I've talked to him in person, obviously. He's a great dude. But uh, I guess if I had to choose one, Troy Williams. But for the polls, I'm choosing everyone. I'm choosing the field. That's such crap. That's going to win the poll. That's not even fair. But How I, great I, would it be to grab a beer with Reggie Northrop? Dude, Talk about his stories. I'd let him punch me in the face. <laughs> I probably <laughs> I wouldn't would go that far. Reggie, but <laughs> Reggie Northrop could... Kick me in the ribs right now because I could say I've taken on a professional MMA fighter. I wouldn't hit him back, but I, you know, I just, it's like getting bit by a shark. It's just something like you can say in at a bar and you're like, I'd be like, Hey, Brandon Silvers, I got kicked in the ribs by Reggie Northrop. I saw he lit you up in the XFL. <laughs> like we have that in common, you know? So I would let him punch me in the face, but. <laughs> All right, guys, are we ready? For Pop out the, answer. Uh... Are, are we ready for the next one? Well, the last thing I would like to no, say, you brought up Troy I, Williams. I don't think he's a cheater. I just think he's a chess Crap master. Crap. Chess master. Chess master. I like that. We agreed to play checkers, and then you play chess, and that's not fair. But uh, whatever. I always, digress. Always, I, sure. always, my always. friend. Yeah. I digress. But the last thing I do want to say is that Troy Williams, um, I have met a lot of players at this point. You know, we've been to multiple hubs. We've talked to a lot of players in person. The only player who went out of their way of all the players ever. And it's not like that player, other players were not uh, as great or as nice, but this is the, he's the only guy who went out of his way and walked up to me and said, I'm Troy. What's your name? Uh, He just went out of his way and he came up and he introduced himself to me because I was there with you. And he was like, how are you doing? And nobody else did that. And it just really, it's always stood out to me. And I have thought that Troy Williams was a stand up player a great player and a great guy ever since. So that's the last thing. And a top 10 quarterback, but we'll go, we'll go on from there. <laughs> Arguably. Yeah. I mean, at least top 12, you know. but KB what's, uh, what's number three. All right, here we go. Uh, let's talk about who you think is the most likely to be the breakout star of the upcoming season. It's It's a surprise breakout star. So somebody that people aren't expecting. Like, it's not like, oh, you know, Abram Smith is going to be a breakout star or somebody that moved. You know, I asked a couple people, who should I do? And they were like, what about John Trey Kirkland? I was like, nobody would be surprised if John Trey Kirkland came out and balled out because he did. He balled out for the rough next last year. And now he's on a different team. So this is a surprise breakout. breakout, Right. A breakout is somebody that is a surprise. That's fair. Sure, my bad. <laughs> you go first. Go first or second? All right, you go first. So, I already know your answer, so this is going to be pretty. I interesting. know your answer as well. Yeah, I'm choosing Calvin Turner, the uh, slot receiver for the San Antonio Brahmas. I told you before in the show that I was trying to go away from being a homer the entire episode. Yeah. Um, so me as well. I wanted, I wanted to go, except, yeah, you're right. You're, you're right. I thought you chose the roughnecks. My bad, but uh. So I chose this guy, and I, I kind of am a homer with my answer. Um, funny thing is, uh, he grows. He grew up down the street. You know, his high school is a rival high school of my nephews. Uh, they're at the same level, and he graduated from New Hampstead High in Savannah, Georgia, outside of Savannah, Georgia. Um, and then he went to Jacksonville, right? He was a quarterback, and he was a defensive back in, co- in high school. He went to Jacksonville. Well, he was a linebacker in high school. Went to Jacksonville and became a defensive back and a kick returner his freshman year. Started, led the team in pass breakups, fifth in tackles at Jacksonville. Pretty impressive. You know, he was he he wasn't really a DB his entire life in Georgia. So it's not like he was he was playing competition and he never really learned that position. Sophomore year in Jacksonville, he was a starting quarterback for his team. Yes, it was triple option, but it was a completely different side of the ball. He went from kick returning. And a DB, right? So triple option quarterback. What do you know about triple option quarterbacks? They run the ball, right? They're not really passers. They're basically fancy runners. They they take the snaps. They're like Jarek McKinnon he, at Georgia Southern. If his sophomore year, on his sophomore year, he set program records for touchdowns in a single season for Jacksonville, which is now a D1 program. And then he was 36 yards away from breaking the season, season single season record in yards. Sorry. He broke his leg in the finale. That's so he 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 would have. Junior year, he had thirteen hundred all-purpose yards, fifteen touchdowns. He was all-purpose uh, first-team All-American conference. Then Jacksonville 
folds their program. They, they fold their they fold their program. COVID happens. He transfers to Hawaii. He goes from you know the East Coast small East Coast guy to Mountain West. Yeah, it's 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 an upgrade for him to Hawaii. Yeah, he's a running back, wide receiver. His his uh, senior year, I guess. Um, he debuted. He debuted with two touchdowns on eight carries. Right, that was his debut at Hawaii. All mid, all Mountain West gets an extra year because of COVID. Has seventy three carries. Has seventy three receptions. Touches the ball a ton. Has twelve touchdowns. He fits AJ Smith's uh, system. He's a slot guy. He's only five ten. He's a little, he's a little smaller, shifty. AJ Smith, what do you know about the spread offense that he runs? Get the ball uh, into the playmaker's hands. Yeah, it's quick. So Let's throw someone it that's quick and or or just spread it and get it out of the quarterback's hands and get into yeah. the playmaker's hands. It's make Brandon Silver's look better than he is. Still trolling, man. Man, Silver's getting heat tonight. Uh, but so last year the Houston Roughnecks, their leading receiver for uh, yards was. Harris, right? Travell Harris. Mm-hmm. He was five foot eight. He's a small guy. So the slot guy gets the ball in this offense a lot. Um, I think Calvin Turner is a perfect example for this league because I think he can get to the next level. And I believe that he fits AJ Smith's um, system perfectly. And I know you're going to argue his competition in camp. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, we're, we're going to, we're not going to argue that the slot guy is very important in the AJ Smith's offense. Yes. So the floor is yours. So you can't argue that he's very important in the offense because I am arguing. I decided I was going to go toe to toe with you and that we were going to make it as fair as possible. I am going with Landon Akers, who is also a slot receiver for the San Antonio Brahmas. He is direct competition with Calvin Turner. Now, the thing about him is that he was already on the Brahmas last season. There he is right there. He is six foot tall, you know, scrappy guy. The thing about him is that he runs very crisp routes. He finds the open space across the middle. He's very, very good at doing what slot receivers need to do. He gets most of his yards after catch. Last season, he had 31 receptions, 303 yards, averaging almost 10 yards a catch, 9.77 yards a catch. Now, did you know his name before I brought it up? I didn't. I didn't know his name either. He put up 303 yards last year. He was one of the most consistent receivers for the Brahmas. And yet people didn't talk about him. He's a fan favorite there for the people who really paid attention to the Brahmas, which, you know, isn't a huge amount of people. And so like, he's a fan favorite. He fits the scheme. He's a great slot receiver. He runs very crisp routes and he finds the open space. He's also tough as nails. He takes big hits, but the biggest reason that I think that he's a breakout player and that he beats Calvin Turner is that last season, he was traded from the Brahmas towards the end of the season, or it may have been after the season. I don't know when the trade happened, but he was traded to the Houston Roughnecks and Wade Phillips. He was traded to them. They wanted him from that team, so they got him from the Brahmas. Then Roughnecks fold, and they hand the the torch over to the Gamblers to give them the jerseys and the name. Then they go back. They... Wade Phillips takes over at the Brahmas. He then drafts Landon Akers back to the Brahmas. He really wants this guy. They really think that he's going to work in this system. And that's why I think that he is the breakout player. He is the guy that is going to be the guy for Quentin Dormady. When Cody Latimer is being covered up, when Katie Cannon and they have a really good receiver that I'm blanking on right now. But when those guys are tied up, the guy that's going to be consistent and that he's going to get the yards and he's going to get the hard first downs when they're really keying the superstar players is going to be Landon Akers. He's a Super Bowl champion with the Rams. You can see it right there. Once Iowa State didn't put up crazy, crazy numbers, but he's just he's the guy you can trust, man. Look at that. Who couldn't love that? That's a that's a face only a mother could love. Like <laughs> he's a good receiver. They wanted him there. They went out and got him in a trade. Then when they folded, they went back and got him in the draft because they wanted him that bad. So I really do think that he beats Calvin Turner in the battle. I think he becomes the dependable receiver that Quentin Dormady drops down to when things aren't open and they're keying his big, big targets. That's See, why. we're going to disagree there because I think Garbers is going to be the starter. But wow, um, who? So Turner was a Brahma was signed signed by the Brahmas before Wade Phillips came over. Did you know that? 
in the draft? What? No, he he was signed a letter of intent before the before the merger actually happened. He was okay. on the roster, so he was there, and he never got cut. If we know anything about San Antonio, they basically cut their entire team, right? Mm-hmm. But Boogie got signed and then got cut. So obviously they have plans for this guy as well. I know you say he comes over from Houston, but this guy was already on the roster and they kept him when they got rid of most a lot of every, a, a lot of their roster, right? Like they don't have a quarterback coming back. They don't have a lot of D tackles coming back. They don't have like they are the Houston Roughnecks in Brahma's colors. Literally. But this was one of the guys that they kept from the previous regime regime. Mm-hmm. So I, I really feel that that strengthens my argument because guess what? They could have got rid of him just like all the rest of the Brahma players, but AJ Smith and Wade Phillips decided to keep him. So Okay. Okay. That's a that's a good I think that we've both made pretty good points. And this is a fun one that I don't think we have to go super hard in the argument about. You know, we we no. we do that in argument one. Debate one is is hard. Yeah. Let me say this that's now. why when I win that topic, that's why I win that topic. I whatever. Like I I, I don't care if I go one or two in the week. Who are my breakout oh. player? I'm going to say all of them. All of the players are my breakout player. <laughs> You're a loser for that. But I think it's Landon Acres. You think that it's Calvin Turner, and it's a we literally get to see who wins this one in camp. And it's going to be crazy if it's neither. But <laughs> one of them is probably going to be the starting slot receiver for the Brahmas, and we will know hands down who won that. It might not even be the person who wins the debate on Twitter, which is cool. So there you go. That was our three debates. Before we get into the blind side, I want to say uh, when this show drops, there will also be polls dropping. It'll be a thread on Twitter, and then polls will drop on YouTube as well, where you can uh, go and click on the Whatever choice you think won, you can pick Webb's choice, Ace's choice. If you like one of us more, I guess you can choose that person, or you can look at the actual facts and pick depending on that, and pick depending on if they actually answered the question or said every quarterback, which is crap. But go on Twitter, on YouTube, vote in those polls. Let us know who you think won. We literally put it up here on the show, so your vote is not for nothing. There you go. Go to at PolarOpsUFM on Twitter. And also something that uh, one of our biggest followers, I met with him this weekend. I was the second time I've met, met him in person. Texas Pete said that we should ask fans if we swayed any of you. So let us know if webinized argument, you went in and when we first said the names, you were like, oh, Ace has got this. But then Web swayed you. Or maybe you heard the names that we said and you said, oh, well, Web's name is definitely better. And then my argument swayed you. Let us know in the comments. Let us know what you thought. Let us know if we made you hate the person. Let us know if you just hate us. We just love comments. Let us know, man. All right. But, KB, I think we have a blind side. We do, gentlemen. And we are going to stay on the the QB topic. So what I'd like to talk about is... Is there a QB on a team that you think is a sleeper to take QB1? Ooh. Web, do you have one off the top of your head? Well, uh, let's go through the teams, right? We we didn't plan yeah. for this. So, so okay. Houston is wide open, so there is no definite yeah. QB1. So no. They, they can't... I will say uh, if Michigan? Jared Garantano wins it, then that's my that would be insane if he won that in Houston. Okay. But. San Antonio, you say it's Dormany. I think it's Garbers. Yeah. Um, so that one, if Garbers, I think Garbers is the underdog there. So if Garbers wins. Hey, there's um, Tom Arlington, Flacco. Yeah. Arlington, you got Lindsey Scott. I know you want to talk about him so much. Colin Ayers and <laughs> Luis Perez and Andrew Plitt. Have, Andrew Plitt. Plitt. So that's a wide open competition. I know Perez is is the locked in. He's the guy. Player. Lindsey Scott, you know, I mean, they might bring him in for like a Derry King type situation, yeah. like how the Gamblers last year would bring in Terry Wilson just to run the ball. Personally, uh, Lindsay, I hate that. Lindsey Scott is not a rusher like that, though. Like, no, he, he's, he's not. Been, he's Husker. He's Husker. He's yeah. not. But I think he runs better than Luis Perez, and they might put oh, him yeah. in just for no, dude. He's definitely not like a scat back type quarterback. Yeah, you see he's that not picture Brandon King. posted of him yesterday, dude? <laughs> yeah, he looked like Batman in Justice League. Yeah, yeah. but. Uh, I think that they might put him in because he is a more mobile and athletic quarterback than Luis Perez. The one thing we know about Luis is that he bowls and stands in the pocket. So, like, you know, putting in Lindsey Scott for some packages is not crazy. 
I can see it happening. Uh, but do I think he wins the starting position? No. Troy, Actually, Troy over Cookus. I I don't see it happening no. at the beginning. Yeah, as much as I would love to see it. Um, Damar, uh, I think I know who. I think I know who. Damar is considered the starter. He's not. Right. I mean, I, I it's got to be. I believe it's Matt Corral. We literally heard like you know Zach Potter didn't bring it up in his interview today, like stuff like that. But we heard from Sports Illustrated that he went to the Brahmas, or not the Brahmas, the Stallions, because. Like, there were four teams on the table, and he liked the situation there for starting. Matt Corral went there to start. Now, I'll tell you who my sleeper pick probably would be. Would probably Michigan. be Michigan, Michigan. with yeah, Danny Etling. Yeah. I think Danny Etling could win that position battle. I think that EJ Perry, you know, I went back. I was watching um, his highlights half today, of actually. I was watching his highlights today because if you look on our YouTube in our shorts, I posted a quarterback ranking and EJ Perry was number eight. One of his touchdowns he scored because it was an improvisational play where he fumbled the snap. And then on the extra point where they went for two, he almost fumbled the snap again. Like he's not the most polished quarterback. And I think Danny Etling comes in and he has a more veteran presence. I think he has great mechanics I think Danny Etling could hands down win that and be the week one starter. So that would probably be the guy that I say. Yeah, uh, that, that's that's probably the number one. But how great would it be if Brandon Silvers took over for McCarron? We're talking that would about be Silvers. The dopest the thing ever. I would Someone buy him tag every Silvers year. in his. Yeah, yeah. I, I would, I would have a beer with Silvers year. if Silvers joins the team with his like friend from high school, Dude, right? With, with his then... like one of his best friends that they literally go on bro trips together, <laughs> <laughs> and then he beats him out after. After McCarron probably is the reason he got signed, right? Yeah, and like then McCarron, like, you know, Silver. he got the red carpet deal with the, oh with the league he and got all that. Three kind of stuff. press releases that yeah. was ridiculous. Yeah, so, so it, I mean, it would be amazing if Silver's becomes the quarterback there. Manny Wilkins is there as well. Wilkins, Kenny is in our year. Manny Wilkins, I don't see that one happening, but that would be, that would be crazy. Um, I don't know. I mean, if if Paul Kelly took his job back, I I don't know. Paul Kelly's third, man. I know he is. And that's crazy. From going from starting. brought the other two in. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't get rid of Cole Kelly because, you know, you got to think of where is my floor for quarterbacks, right? Because in this league, the turnover is so heavy and people can get hurt. And you can't just go grab somebody like EJ Perry is not a normal thing to go pick up a quarterback and he can come in and lead you to the playoffs. So to have somebody like Cole Kelly, who has already started in this league, you know, the fans are already behind him. So when he comes in, they aren't down. So you're not like the fans would get excited to see Cole Kelly can't come in if Troy and case got hurt. So, you know, the momentum's not swinging as hard. I think it's a smart move to keep him. Even if he doesn't think he fits his uh, scheme as much, maybe he's not as accurate as the other two, you know, in a very heavily passing offense. But yeah, I would say Danny Etling. Danny Etling. Yeah. If he he, he would win it and nobody's talking about it, everybody's saying EJ Perry. But I think Danny Etling could hands down win it. And we don't even hear about EJ Perry this year. So I, I, when we were talking about those top eight quarterbacks, I put Perry eight and like I didn't even think about it. Well, I I think I I had him at seven or eight. Yeah. And and the whole reason why is because you don't have a large history, right? Yeah. And, and at this level, and I know he keeps getting shots at the NFL. That that's that's fine, but he's really not. Like he's yeah. he's he's practice squatting for two weeks, getting cut. So is it a a favor thing? Like oh, we know he knows the system, can. And that's not a criticism, of EJ Perry, but and then his USFL time, he had one great half. Let's let's be real. The first half, they looked terrible. It looked like that game was over against Pittsburgh. That second half, he looked great. You're right. But if you talk to those Maulers, they said if they had tape on him, they would have been able to shut him down. So they did some different things. So Yeah. I also think he just went against what Eric Marty was telling him to do. I think he just started throwing it downfield. Like, I really think that's what he started doing in the second half. And I think that this season with a new offensive coordinator, you know, while it is the OC from Philly and – it's still a deep passing game. Like, you know, it's still very heavily passing. 
I don't know. He, watching his tape didn't impress me a lot. And I think Danny Etling's more polished. Sure. But yeah. All right. So I think that's it. Go vote in the polls. Let us know in the comments what you thought. If you thought that I was crazy, like the most comments we ever got, I think was when I said Quentin Dormany was the best uh, drafted quarterback and everybody lost their minds. So let us know what you thought. Let us know if we're crazy. Let us know if I want to know what you guys think was web cheating by saying every quarterback in the UFL. Cause that's crap to me, but let us know. And I guess we'll see you next week. Edit.